When Gapo dudes and chicks, it's time for another episode of Up to No Goof. You know the drill. This is the show where I talk about Disney the way I remember it, which means I'm always right. Most of the time. Oh, and by the way, today's episode comes complete with a brand new background, which you might have already seen in other vlogs, it doesn't matter, but it's new to this show, so you should totally like it. Because there's a Darth Vader wearing Mickey ears back there, and what's not cool about that? Actually, that's kind of oddly appropriate, because those ears come from Disneyland, and today's episode of Up to No Goof is my top 10 Disneyland rides, slash Disney's California Adventure rides. I just wanted to, I wanted to include one in there, okay? Maybe two, I don't know. So this is my personal list, which means it's the best list, of rides that I like at Disneyland, starting from number 10, all the way to my number one favorite ride at Disneyland. So, let's see what they are. Number 10 on my list is California Screamin', and I'll tell you why. Obviously, I'm gonna tell you why, that's what this show's about. To put it plain and simple, it's fast. First of all, it's super fast, the way it starts off, and that's super awesome. B, it goes upside down, and it's the only roller coaster in the Southern California parks that does that, which is awesome to me, I love, roller coasters that do this thing, the loop -a de loop C, although it is no longer present, it once ran to the sounds of the Red Hot Chili Peppers blaring in your ears, and that was awesome, and I did get to ride it, and yes, it was exactly as awesome as I'm making it out to be, trust me. Number nine, instead of screaming, I'm gonna take your sword in over California. First of all, this ride is cool because not only are you flying through an IMAX theater, but it also like drops little scents of like orange and pine. And although it just smells like a car freshener, I appreciate what they're going for while also feeding me stunning visuals. Mm, not the best visuals, but it's one of the best kind of all-encompassing experiences. And, and it just makes me feel good when I ride. That, coupled with the fact that Patrick Warburton gives you the safety briefing before the ride, and my favorite line out of any of those safety briefings ever in any Disneyland thing ever, is when he looks at the kid after he buckles up his seatbelt and he just goes, Nice work, pal. I don't know, it cracks me up every time. I don't know, it's weird. Number Ocho. Number eight on this list is Thunder Mountain. You know why? Because it's awesome. So the ride is fast, yes, it's cool. And the remodeled version is even faster and the effects are amazing and that's all cool. But what I really like about this ride is that there's like little urban myths surrounding it that you can feel like you're participating in, sort of. You know what I mean? Mainly I'm talking about the goat. You know the goat I'm talking about, right? It's like up on the thing and it's like Anyway. So if you keep your eyes focused on the goat as the train starts to drop, the centrifugal force actually pulls you the opposite direction, giving you a sort of sense of, uh, of, of increased gravity or pressure or something like that. It just makes the ride feel faster. It's amazing. It's cool. Go on it. Do it. And then when you do it, go, oh my god, he's right. And, and you'll think of me and it'll be great. And it'll be our ride together. Okay? It'll be like our first internet date. Number seven. So number seven might come as a little bit of a surprise to you, and that's because it's the storybook canal boat ride. Hold on, hold on, hold on, chill out. Yeah, yes, it's the ride where you float into the mouth of Monster of the Whale, which is pretty cool, right? It's pretty metal. But I like riding that ride at night. There's something about it, it's super calming, it's super beautiful. I don't know, it's kind of a, more of a poetic thing to me. It's just a beautiful atmosphere, an ambiance, if you know what I mean. Number six. Okay, enough with the slow stuff, back to the fast rides. Cars in DCA. Holy Toledo. That ride's amazing, first of all. It's so well put together. It's got like the state-of-the-art animatronics and, it's, and it tells a story and it's super cool and fun and like, oh, there's all this stuff going on and you got Miter and you got all that cool stuff happening. But it's also super fast considering what it is. I was pretty impressed and although it doesn't do anything too crazy, you get to race another car and there's an element of interaction there that just makes you like super hyped for the ride. Awesome ride. Now, is it worth waiting three hours for? Mm, yes, do it. Number five. Next up we have Peter Pan. Everybody loves Peter Pan and it was recently remodeled too. Good old Pedro Pan. Here's why I like that ride. Yes, everyone likes Peter Pan the movie and that's great and that's cool. It is a storybook ride, but there's one particular scene when you float into one room, it's almost like you're flying in space at night looking over London. You spend a particularly long time in that room, which means that the creators knew that it was gonna kinda capture your imagination. But there's something they did with the fiber optic lights to make them look like stars. It really looks like you're floating through space. It just it gets me. I'm a sucker for space. I love space. Number four. We pillage, we plunder, we rifle, we loot. We also ride on rides that have really strong chlorine in the water, and that's Pirates of the Caribbean. It's a good old swat buggling adventure, and I've always been a huge fan of the Pirates ride, and then I was a massive fan of the Pirates movies, and my very first cosplay was Jack Sparrow, so needless to say, that ride is, is in my list, because yo-ho, you know what I'm saying? It's awesome. And oddly enough, I really like when you enter the ride and you get that waft of chlorine and you're like, Bleh. but part of me is kind of like, Bleh. oh, hey, yeah, it's like my, it's like my youth. It's 
smells like being a kid. And I gotta say, top-notch animatronics, except for the last Jack, who's a little questionable. He's just kind of like, fresh negative and gold tree. It doesn't quite look like him, but the first two Jack Sparrows, spot on. What we got next mm, is Space Mountain. Obviously, everyone loves Space Mountain, and that includes me. It's super fast. It's super unique in the fact that it's indoors and pitch black. I love that. You go into a space station and you truly believe it. You hear like intercoms communicating and you see like boards and you walk into a room with a giant spaceship and then you get on a giant spaceship and then there's somebody sitting in a panel room that directs you and then you go through a warp drive. You do all of that at Disneyland. Like, that's pretty impressive. And uh, of course, the only natural successor to Space Mountain, the other space ride, is Star Tours. So it should come as no surprise to you that number two on my list is Star Tours. I mean, given the fact that there's literally a Boba Fett helmet and a Darth Vader helmet, and um, that's not R2-D2 because it's like got a, it's a got a Mickey Mouse version of him, but you know, you get, it's an astromech droid. Star Wars memorabilia is what I'm trying to say. I love Star Wars, so Star Tours is naturally on my list. Now, let me get ahead of you for a second here. Uh, Leo, let me ask you something. Do you like the new updated Star Tours, or do you like the old Star Tours? Because obviously you gotta clarify for me. Uh, yeah, I will. Okay, just get... I'm getting there, I'm getting there. The new Star Tours ride is pretty cool, I have to admit. Some of them are a little lackluster, Kashyyyk, I'm looking at you. When you look at Hoth and Naboo, it's like Christmas when I get those. But, I mean, nostalgia drives me, and I gotta give a shout out to the old Star Tours. There was something about Rex driving you through a comet field and yelling at you about it, like, Comets! 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 Classic. Also, the fact that he's voiced by Paul Rubens, aka Pee Wee Herman, I don't know, there's something about that that just always made me laugh. Like, there's a robot voiced by Pee Wee Herman driving you through comets, and R2-D2 is shooting bad guy. I don't know, it. oh, oh. And let's not forget the fact that in the old one, you actually got to do the Death Star trench run and blow it up. I mean, you literally were Luke Skywalker in the last Star Tours. Canon aside, as a Star Wars fan, I've always wanted to do that, and that ride allowed me to do that. So thank you, okay? Thanks, Star Tours. I appreciate everything you've done for my childhood. It's really cool of you, man. It's super cool. And now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, this summer, Eddie Murphy in the Haunted Mansion. <laughs> yes, the number one ride that I love the most at Disneyland is the Haunted Mansion. This ride has everything as far as I'm concerned. First of all, animatronics still hold up. All the visual effects are amazing. Number two, this song is so catchy. Oh my god, I literally would be on my way to work and be like, Crypt on Crypt on the I also love the fact that the ride is completely closed off from the outside world, right? So as soon as you walk in, you're already getting into the atmosphere, things are getting real, and then the uh, cast members there get into character and they're like, please step into the dead center of the room. You're like, <laughs> get it, that's a good joke. And then you walk in there and the elevator closes, and from that moment you are completely enveloped into this world of whatever place this haunted mansion exists in, right? The elevator goes down, everything seems magical and supernatural. You arrive uh, in the hallway and you're walking down and it's raining, and you forget that there's another world outside that you just walked out of that hot sun. Now you're in this damp, rainy, dark, midnight threshold of a I don't know, I don't know how they do it, but you, you truly get transported into another place. And then the ride itself is obviously magnificent. So that's it! That's my list of my top 10 favorite rides at Disneyland slash California Adventure. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. If you agree, I want to know what your favorite rides are. I know that I didn't mention, first of all, there's like a million rides at Disneyland, so some of you are going to agree with me on some rides, and some of you are going to be wrong. <laughs> I love that joke. Don't forget to follow me on other social media, guys. I want to continue this conversation there, so tweet at me, post on my Instagram, leave comments down below, obviously, and uh, follow me on Facebook. It'd be really great to chit-chat about Disney, because that's what we do around here. But until next time, stay goofy. Mm.